So I believe our guest is on the phone, and it's great to play this little sounder here. The Rizzuto Show, talking chat with Kevin Shattenkirk. Hey, Kevin Shattenkirk's on the phone. Oh, <laughs> What's up, guys? Good, Good morning. morning. And, and first off, congratulations. And you have a lot. You have a lot to be thankful for this year, don't you? I do. I do. Thank you, guys. It's. Uh... It's been a hell of a year, despite everything that's uh, obviously been going on in the world. But um, yeah, a lot of a lot to celebrate. Stanley Cup champion Kevin Shattenkirk on the phone. Dude, wow. we cool. we have talked since the first day we talked to this guy about how down to earth, cool, and real this guy is. And I just out of the blue, I was like, ah, I'm going to text him see if he'll come on the show. Probably won't get back to you. Probably super busy. Eight minutes later, what's up, big fella? I'd love to. <laughs> it was great. Right. Put a big smile on my face. Yeah. Man. How Thanks much did your it. phone blow up uh, as soon as you won the? Uh, your, your team won the Stanley Cup. Oh, it was, it was crazy. Um, I think uh, I think we had about I don't know over 300 texts, um, DMs, you name it. I you know kind of left it for a few days mm -hmm. to uh, just soak everything up and, and enjoy the uh, the victory. But it was it was very heartwarming to get kind of you know outcry from people and, and uh, the support from you know people that I've I've run into all along the way have helped me get here. Yeah, when did you go to sleep? How how far after you won the cup did you actually go to sleep? Was it you know didn't sleep for a day? So, you were just going hard. You know we uh, we went hard obviously the night we won um, and we all took some cat naps on the flight home uh -huh. just to uh, just to recharge and then once we got back to Florida it was about a. A four to five day uh, bender <laughs> that uh, there wasn't there wasn't too much going that was too much sleep going on. Yeah, I, I just remember when the when the Blues won, watching the Blues get off the airplane, and then I, somebody was wearing like uh, you know their tie as a as a <laughs> so yeah somebody know, had just, headband. Uh, just a vest on and nothing else. <laughs> <laughs> and I, and I'm sure that's the way yeah. it was with you guys too. Yeah, you know we uh, obviously we we didn't have the opportunity to leave the bubble after we won, so we um, you know we were just in the hotel room and they really made it uh, you know a lot of fun to just be with the staff and and everyone who was part of the organization to celebrate it and have that moment together. And um, then when we got home, I mean all, a lot of us hadn't seen our families in a long time, so we tried to look somewhat presentable. Mm. Yeah, what was what was bubble like bu bubble life like? I mean, you were in there for how long? Three months. Uh, it's about, yeah, about 70 days, so a little less, but, uh, it was, you know, what? It, all, all things considered, they did a tremendous job with, you know, keeping us entertained and making sure that, uh, you know, I mean, it was, it was like a, a really nice prison. <laughs> it was, <laughs> like we were story. sleeping, uh, sleeping in great beds and, and, you know, at really nice hotels and we had some outdoor space to, to get out there and move around. But, um, you know, the family aspect and not being able to, to have them around, especially to, to experience us winning a Stanley Cup was uh, was kind of the hardest part. Yeah, and you and you have a newborn. I, I'm sure that was that was tough to be away. Yeah, so he's. I mean, thankfully for Facetime, uh, you know, he still recognized me when I came home. And um, my wife is, uh, and my wife and I are, ex are expecting a girl in February. Hey, so we. That's great. Yeah, we uh, we have a lot going on, and and she, um, you know, she was a trooper throughout the whole process. Um, so bring us through a typical day of a hockey player in the bubble, of an NHL or in the bubble. So you get up and what? Uh, so on a, I'll call it a non-game day. We get up. We usually have uh, – we don't have any sort of skate or anything like that. We'll have uh, a team meeting at around 6 o'clock at night just to get ready for the, the game the next day. So um, a lot of it is treatment and finding time to uh, – get with our athletic trainers and make sure our body feels, you know, up to, up to the task the next day. And, mm -hmm. um, when we were in Toronto, we had the BMO soccer fields, which is where the uh, Toronto SC plays. We were able to go over there, play wiffle ball and, um, just screw around a little bit, spike ball. And, um, it was really just kind of getting your mind off of whatever sort of, you know, hockey was going on because you're, you're so, you're so in, encased in it when you're, when you're on game days. Mm -hmm. Were you around other teams? I mean, were there was there mixing and mingling of teams? No, not. I mean, we were around. Everyone was in the same hotel, which was really strange. So, um, you know, you could be in a fight and battling with a guy and calling in something that you know you can't really say on the radio, mm -hmm. and then 
you get back to the hotel and you're in the same elevator with him going up to your room after you just beat yeah, him. So, <laughs> like, I'm standing next to Dane O'Chara after, you know, we just we just beat them like 7-1 to one, one game in the elevator and we just didn't say a word to each other. It was yeah. really strange. God, we have trouble awkward. passing each other in the hallway. I can't imagine what an elevator <laughs> like that would be. That's crazy, man. Totally worth it, though, I'd imagine, in the end, right? Yeah, it was, it was worth... Uh, you know, it was worth it all, and, and you know, I think it was it was one of the hardest Stanley Cups to win, just given the uh, the mental aspect of it and um, how we stayed prepared over the pause. And um, you know, it was it was just an amazing feeling to to be able to hold that cup over my head finally. And um, you know, you really don't know what it's going to be like until you do it. And yeah. Uh, it's amazing. Yeah. So so I mean, a lot of people say the Blues who had who had some momentum. Before the you know before the shut, the NHL shutdown, they say they didn't handle the bubble life well. What do you think you guys did differently than the Blues? Was it a was it a mental thing? Was it I, I don't know I don't know how could you compare? Well, you know I think for everyone it was it was different. I think our coaches did a great job of again making sure that you know on on non game days that we were kind of able to escape from uh, you know the bubble. I mean, we couldn't get outside of, of the actual fenced in area, but they just did a great job of making sure that we kind of separated ourselves from hockey and, and enjoyed the company of each other and made sure that we hung out as teammates and, and, you know, we're able to just have a, have a great experience with it. I know some teams struggled with it. Um, and it was hard. Look, I mean, we, it, we had the benefit that we played really well the whole way through and we felt confident about our team from the get-go and uh, no one on our team other than Patty Maroon had won the cup before so we had a lot of hungry yeah, how many, to how many times realize did that to, this is a good chef. How many times did I have to remind you guys it was a second in a row? <laughs> oh my god he's ridiculous that guy we, we're like all right buddy we get it you won twice like give it, you know give it a rest did he make sure everybody knew his name was on it from the year before hey did he point at it hey look there's my name it's right every there. time he had the cup every time he had the cup he had to show us yeah, that's actually why you left the team right because of him is that right <laughs> yeah you know what i left because i knew he was coming somewhere down the line i had to get out of there hey, do so, so, with him. so everybody says you know pat maroon is like the the class clown in the locker room he's boisterous he's loud he he's fun to be around uh talk about mm -hmm. pat for a second you know he's and i've gotten to know him when i was playing in st louis just because he was home around uh you know in the off season and you know he, like you said he's just kind of that fun loving guy who loves to lighten the mood he knows when it's time to be serious but um you know he just has that ability where he can get anyone to laugh and doesn't matter if it's the most serious person in the room or the biggest jokester and um you know he knew exactly when the team needed that and you know kept it light especially when we we had those hard moments during the playoffs and during the season where you know maybe we just needed to l settle down a little bit and have a little fun he seems to be the kind of guy that would fart at exactly the right moment to cut the tension. Like he's that right? Like he's like an, almost an artist that way. Knows when to to, to cut the tension at an, at an appropriate <laughs> artist at an appropriate time. He seems to be that kind of guy. Yeah, he's got all the tricks in his in his bag, Chris. <laughs> so as a kid, Kevin, you, you, I mean, as a kid, you dream. You know, the first time you you, you you lace up the skates, you dream of lifting the Stanley Cup. You're at that moment. They hand you the cup. What 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 are your thoughts? Is this heavy? Oh my God! Is it heavier than I thought? It's not. It's it's you know it's it's a lot heavier the next day. Um, <laughs> you know when you're hungover. But um, honestly, it's it, you kind of you don't realize it until you go back and look at it and mm -hmm. see it on video. Um, you know, at the time you you're just so happy that you won. Um, you're so proud of your teammates and. Um, you know, it was it was super light, and you throw it over your head, and you're skating around, and you know, ten seconds later, it's kind of over. But yeah. um, I think after that, you know, you get in the locker room, you see the Stanley Cup just sitting there. That's when it really becomes, um, you know, just that that ultimate feeling of achievement. Now, you guys had a. You, did you guys do just a water parade, like from the boats, or how did that work? We did so. We did the boat parade, um, which was about an hour, and, and drove down the canal. And um, it was 
tremendous. And then we went to Raymond James Stadium where the Bucks play, and they had about 18,000 people in there, wow. um, socially distanced, of course. And, uh, yeah, that was when we were on stage, and, you know, the, the mayor made a speech and our owner, and um, that was kind of our, you know, big big ending to our parade, but mm-hmm. the boat parade was just insane. That looks pretty That looks pretty cool. Hey, back to holding up the Stanley Cup. All I'd be thinking is, don't fall. <laughs> like, don't trip over, like... Where the camera wires. Yeah, camera that, yeah. wires, and, so, you know, there's red carpets out there. You know, just don't trip over anything. You don't want to be... I was afraid guy. I was going to throw it up so fast that it was going to take me, like, back <laughs> over my head. I was going to fall backwards. <laughs> Boy, I, I, what, what, do you think, what do you think you're going to feel like when you see your name etched on there for the first time? That's going to be an amazing moment for you. Yeah, I mean, it gives me chills uh, just kind of hearing you, you say it, and, and I think that's obviously what i'm looking forward to the most um you know they say that your your team's you know names will last on there for 68 years before they have to change the uh the ring out but um you know it's it's amazing and and i'm you know happy to say that i can take my son and show him my name on on the stanley cup and and uh it's a very proud moment for me your last name's not exactly smith did you do the check the spell check for them and everything (laughs) Yeah, they didn't ask me to, uh, you know, shorten my name for the cup or anything, so it should be good. Hey, what are you going to – so you're going to get the cup for a day. What are you going to do? Well, we don't know if we're getting the cup yet because, uh, obviously, with COVID going on, they're not sure if they're going to be able to ship it all over the world. Oh, but, uh, no. It will I happen. Know. It'll happen. It, either way, I think they're going to, you know, make sure that they find us a day with the cup. Um, I'll obviously bring it back home to New York and, and to my hometown for a little bit. And then uh, just probably out by my house in the summer and invite family and friends out for uh, for a nice big party. Mm. Make sure you drive it by where the Rangers play. I'm just saying. Yeah, I might stop in New York City, Penn <laughs> Station, and take a picture in front yeah. of MSG. Well, so you, <laughs> you had, I mean, you had you had a great, you, you, I mean, you had a great run of the playoffs. Twenty five games, three goals, ten assists. You were a plus eight, and uh, and you signed just a new deal with the uh, Anaheim Ducks. Uh, awesome! Congratulations on that. Thank you. Three year Thank deal. You. Um, I mean, you were a free agent. Uh, tell me what it's like on free agent day. I mean, you, you knew you were out there. Uh, do, you, do you sit by the phone? Do you keep yourself occupied, do other things, and whatever happens, happens? You know, it's, it's a lot of phone calls. Um, you know, you have to obviously just talk with, with teams before you even start to negotiate a contract in terms uh, because you want to know what the direction of the team is going in and, and where they see fitting on the team. Um, you know, so we, I was on the phone most of the day and, and having gone through it a couple of years before when I signed in New York, uh, I was much more prepared for it and, and much more at ease. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, it was, it was, it's always a hectic day, but for the most part, you know, it, it runs its course. And, and at the end of the day, you have a big decision to make and, um, uh, moving out West is a huge move for us, but at the same time, uh, we're really excited about it, and, and I'm happy to be joining a very good young team that uh, hopefully we can make a run at it in the next few years. Yeah, and I was reading this this morning. I, I didn't know this, but before you saw him with the Lightning, uh, you had an opportunity to go to Anaheim, but you chose Tampa. I did. I did. My my final two teams uh, last summer were Tampa and Anaheim. And, um, you know, at the time, it, it just Tampa Bay was the right move for me to set myself up uh, you know, for the rest of my career. And, and obviously things worked out perfectly in Tampa. Um, and then you know, I was happy that Anaheim was, was still willing to, uh, to give us a call, um, you know, at the end of all of it. So uh, it's, a, it's a great opportunity. I'll be going in there as one of the more experienced guys and, and asked to be a leader. And, um, you know, I'm looking forward to that. Before we let you go, and I know you, you're busy today, uh, overtime goal against Dallas. Game two. Yeah. Of the uh, of the semifinals, puck goes in. Did you even realize it went in? People, you know, people start cheering. What's going through your head? Well, once again, it was uh, Patty Maroon standing in front, so mm-hmm. I couldn't see it with that big body in the way. But um, <laughs> no, I, you know, it was it was it's a shot that I take all the time and work on all the time. Um, and I felt like if I got it through that defenseman, that something good would come of it. And after it, it went in the net, I kind of saw everyone celebrate. Our, our bench could see it better than, than me. And when everyone started jumping on the ice, um, you know, I knew that, that uh, it had gone in. And 
I mean, talk about an amazing feeling. That's something that you, you play in your driveway and, and play out in your driveway for years as a kid, scoring in the Stanley Cup finals. Yeah. And, um, it was just uh, to be completely smothered by your teammates after that is just uh, it's, it's an amazing feeling. Yeah, for something you did. God, I can just hear the smile in your voice. Man. We, I, it's listen, so awesome, dude. We, we were rooting for you. You know, as soon as you guys made the finals, uh, you know, we were pulling for Tampa Bay because of you. Mm-hmm. Yep. Because and, and because of Pat Maroon. But uh, congratulations on everything, man. All the success. I mean, the Stanley Cup, the new deal with the, uh, with the, uh, with the Ducks and the kids and another baby coming. So oh, awesome, man. man. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it, as always. And, uh, you know, just just know that I'm always following you guys. So uh, I feel like I'm part of the Riz family, and uh, you guys always make it feel that way. Well, you are a part of the family. You are part of the family. Thank you, Kevin Shackenkirk, Yay! everybody. Stanley Cup champion. We'll talk to you soon, buddy. Thanks, guys. Have a good See one. You, there he is. Kevin Shackenkirk. Mary Stanley will never Cup say champion. it either. He does a lot of charity work, too. A lot. If you follow him on Instagram or wherever, he does a lot of charity work. He really yeah. does. Good dude. Good dude. Good dude. We really lucked out even just being able to meet him and know him and have him on the show years ago. Yeah, years ago. Years ago. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, what a, what, a, what a good dude. What a, what a personality. And he's another one of those guys who did what Maroon did. He, he did a one-year deal to set himself up, like he said, for this three years in Anaheim. And, you know, he proved himself for one year and then go get that money. He's one of the good ones, man. You know, yeah, you, you wish for all the success. Yep. He really is. All the success, and he's getting it. Yep. Yeah, he got a, you know, it, it was a strange deal when he went to New York, his... his, his his Childhood team, team, he grew up loving. Like, I grew up, you know, a Ranger fan, as, as, as Kevin did, and he dreamed of playing for the Rangers, and he got hurt. Yeah. And he got hurt and just, you know, didn't work out. Yep. And then he goes to and he goes to, he goes to Tampa, and he wins a freaking Stanley Cup. That's amazing. And he has a great playoff and, and gets, signs a three-year deal with the Ducks. Yeah, he wasn't just on the team for this, for this run. He did well. Yeah. So congratulations, Kevin, and, and we wish you all the success in, uh, in Anaheim.